Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Nick the Quick Van Exel, and you're rocking with Late Night Lake Show. And guys, there's a lot of great stuff that we pulled out of there. I think, I think a couple of things kind of just stand out to me as we we wrap a bow on just the dependency on the Lakers superstars. The one side of the coin is the our, our game plan, our flow, the the, the yeah. sets, our rotations. Mm -hmm. That is coaching that though that that's coaching those are all decisions that are made by coach darvin ham and his coaching staff that is complaint number three right and it might be complaint number one to a lot of lakers fans is coaching decisions it sounds like there are tangible solutions that to make the roster and the rotations make more sense um and I am, you know, I by no means consider myself a X's and O's guru. I do not try to play one on the timeline. There are plenty of great Lakers followers, including Raj, that like to like to talk play sets. You know, Cranjus is another great one. There, there's plenty on the timeline. Go check them out. Um, but I definitely understand rhythm and flow of the game. And yeah. when Lakers are getting their teeth kicked in early, and we look over and our head coach is trying to do a Phil Jackson, just figure it out. It's like, brother, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, this, this is not that you gotta, you gotta stop the bleeding, man. This is, this is a pattern. And I don't know how many times the Lakers have to lose for first quarters for there to be a philosophical change and how we want to address uh, just the mentality, focus, game plan or rotations. But it seems like oftentimes we look over and a lot of Lakers fans feel like they have the inferior coach in a lot of <laughs> matchups. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Raj, from from your viewpoint, I know you you try to take a more sane and stable objective view when it comes yeah. to coaching, because coaching is hard as shit. I could not be a Very. coach. I tried coaching T ball, and I, you know, that was difficult. So, man, where where do you land on just year two Darvin Ham experience? Yeah. So I think, you know, when you take a team to the conference finals, you get a lot of grace. At least I feel like you are deserved a lot of grace. Um, I, you know, I don't agree with everything Darwin does. And some of the stuff to me is tough to kind of separate what's coaching, what's not. Like last night, Kwame, you brought up Joel Embiid had a triple-double against us. A lot of that was because we decided to trap every single time, which I just I – just, and then we went to a zone as well, which just didn't make any sense to me. We decided to zone up against – a Philadelphia team that had, you know, no Joel Embiid on the floor, Maxi with no no ball handlers at all, um, and started to go zone against him. So that's the stuff that, like, I just don't understand. I think Darwin's coming to a point here where it's very similar to last year where he's trying to just throw stuff at the wall, right? Like, he's just trying to throw things at the wall and see what works. He lost his two best point-of-attack defenders in his, in his mind, right? So, like, Gabe Vincent and Jared Vanderbilt are two guys. If you remember in the Sacramento game, he had Gabe Vincent guarding De'Aaron Fox. as a guy he believes is the best guard defender. Jared Vanderbilt, obviously, his he believes is his second best defender on the team behind AD. So you lose, you lose, you lose both of those guys. You lose Rui Hachimura. So I think he's in this place. Last night we started Max Christie, and he's been starting. He did well on Donovan Mitchell. He did well um, on Kyrie Irving. As tough as that matchup is, Tyrese Maxey is just a different speed class. They talk yeah. about weight classes, but. Tyrese is a different speed class than, than Mac Tristia, is, so that's a tough matchup. But again, I think we made it more difficult. Like, I would have liked to see AD guard and bead one on one. Let them live. I hated the trapping. I hated. Oh, my God. Oh, we, early, I, I was like, Max, Max, get your ass back over there, man. What are you doing? Why are you guarding that, when, you know, this is ice? And I know it's it's schemed that way. Yeah, right, right, right. I was wondering too, and I rewatched the game. I was like, oh, no, they're doing this every time. Like, this is a, this is absolutely like what Darvin Ham wants. And I think the point of this, whole point of like zones and doubling right is to stop dribble penetration that's the whole point of it so that you don't have to stop dribble penetration in a one-on-one -on -one kind of category you can kind of stop it by zoning but to me like philly they're playing marcus morris nick batum robert covington all these dudes want to do is shoot open threes patrick beverly that's all he wants to do right patrick beverly all he wants to do is stand out there and shoot open three he doesn't want to dribble he takes two dribbles he's lost and we saw yeah. it when he played here and he we gave him wide open dare i dare you to shoot threes and he nailed him and philly was hot they hit 22 threes i believe through three quarters that was one shy of their record they they i think they're not even in the top half three point you know makes during the season so all that stuff like it i think darvin's experimenting which 
you're 10 and 8 through experimenting. I think that's not terrible. But I feel like he's still in experimental, like in experimental mode, which is a tough place to be when LeBron and AD have played every game. But I think for him, he's like, I have no one who can guard. Uh, he's already benched Austin a couple of games ago, and that's worked. And then Cam Reddish gets hurt, right? So I think in his mind, he's just trying to throw stuff out there. I don't think, I think he still hasn't decided what to do with Christian Wood and Jackson Hayes. I honestly don't think you can play both. Like, I, I I, I just don't think both of those guys can be in the rotation and both kind of give you serviceable minutes. It's just tough for a guy for Christian Wood to be in rhythm. We just talked about rhythm for like 25 minutes. Christian Wood's another rhythm player, guy who averaged 17 and 10 last year. As much as Jason Kidd tried to kick him in the doghouse, he got out every time because he could just score, right? Like, And then Jackson Hayes, another guy who's an athletic energy big. You play in five minutes, Jackson Hayes is going to make two or three dumb moves. That's just like, that's just how it is. And I think he's going to get benched for that. So I don't know if dumb's the right word there, but like just he's gonna make mistakes on the floor. And I feel like ill advised. Yes, yes, yes. Uh he's gonna make ill advised plays. And I just like to me, like both of them are just in a lose lose situation. They're being played together. Those minutes are like negative three. Uh, and they play like 103 minutes in the last four or five games. I just I I I think you gotta set a right rotation, but it's tough right now with all these guys out. And that's where like it's tough to kind of gauge. People are saying fire Darvin Ham. That's not happening. Like you just no, stop not. that. This Let's yeah. stop. Let's stop. Right. If the Clipper coach wants to come over and run, you know, the offense, I wouldn't be upset at that. But I mean, like, Darvin Ham's not going anywhere. So I, I have a little bit more grace than Laker fans do for Darvin. I also was like screaming from the rooftops that Frank Vogel is a good coach. Mm. You brought up the Suns. Ricky, they won seven in a row. Bradley Beal has not played in any of the, I think he maybe played in one, but all three have not played together yet. They're defending their ass off. He's got Josh Akogi as their, like, super wing defender he's got him in this caruso role like those dudes are hooping frank vogel is a good coach i think darvin ham's a solid coach too i think we're too quick to just want to throw coaches away every time there's a little losing streak so that's where i'm at maybe I'm, that's a maybe i'm being an apologist a little bit i just i have a little bit more grace i watched him out coach steve kerr i watched him um kind mm. of have the correct schemes against memphis as well who's obviously burned yeah, their true. house down but but you know what i mean and denver kicked our ass because our stars couldn't like they didn't step up as offensive threats. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like to me like that that Denver series boiled down to Jamal Murray and Nicole Leo just ran two man game every single time, and our guys couldn't score. LeBron missed three wide open threes in game two. Pull up transition once they went under the ball screen. Anthony Davis was not an offensive threat in that series for a lot of it. He had forty in game one and like completely torpedoed in the last three games of that series, and that's why we lost against Denver in my opinion. But that's not. That's nothing to do with Darvin Ham. I just I think Darvin Ham's a fine coach. Is he Greg Popovich or Phil Jackson? No, but how many of those guys are in the league? I'm I'm not I sure. Mean, He's look not at Pop's sure. record right now. Long key. I know they are a rebuilding team, but you know <laughs> he's he not turning water into wine over there himself. Um, no. Right before Raj just reminded me that the he, Darvin Ham was the coach of that uh, Memphis series and was the head coach of that Warriors series. I was just about to ask, don't it just feel like he should have started with like the Pistons? Wouldn't have that just made like perfect sense? A young <laughs> uh, coming team, stay under the radar while he do, works through the kinks and stuff. But yeah, anyways, then yeah, yeah, you're right. He kind of, he did out coach Steve Kerr in the dynasty killing Warrior team. Well, you have some Warriors that, fans. He can't coach, so he, he, he can't go. Will he out coach? You know, but the Warriors fans don't think Steve Kerr works. Yeah, they don't think he can right coach. Now, they, you know. they think Steve's awful, and, and that's why I'm not really trying to, you know, continue the, you know, the Darvin Ham slander. It kind of, you know, again, I'm starting to move and say this is what it is. Like Raj, I don't think he's going to get the the boot this season that 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 is not something that no. really should be entertained like but at the same time damn it all the adjustments that the lakers can and should make i don't feel confident that they will make them do you i i mean like uh, i hope they do i, yeah. I feel like we're, we're in a results-based business we're in a results-based yeah. sport uh, it's a results-based system, and these results haven't worked. And I do think Darwin's waiting to get his full team. Now, like, is that the correct mm -hmm. approach? I'm not sure, yeah. but I think that's what he's waiting for. He feels that Gabe Vincent and Jared Vanderbilt are two of the, like, I mean, let, let's be real here. Vanderbilt, Gabe Vincent, and Rui Hachimura are three of the top eight. At least they're projected to be, right? Yeah. When, when yep. I came on this podcast, I've done other ones. We've all projected the rotation and lineups. Cam Reddish was not a part of that. Max Christie 
let's try to we try to fit Max Christie in to, as as best we could. But Gabe, Rui, and Vando were definitely top eight rotation level pieces. And I think until those guys come back, I just don't see a big shift. Um, which I disagree. I think we're in a place where we need to kind of adjust what we're doing. I think the data has been very clear that this offense is just not successful and we're getting absolutely we're getting the like doors blown off every time LeBron touches the bench. Um, like we just can't score. Uh, and we're throwing all our best offensive players out there, and that's still happening. Like we're throwing D'Lo, Austin, Christian Wood, um, AD, and whoever the fifth guy is, and that that off that Didn't team matter. still can't get any baskets. Um, and I think a lot of that is the system. And the part the other other big problem to me is they they spit out continuity five hundred times this summer, hmm. five hundred times, right? And then they started with a new offense. I just I like I just. I, it's good to have all the guys back, right? <laughs> no, they know the system well. No, I agree. I mean, I'll be honest. I think Raj, you're, you are much kinder to Darwin than I think a lot of people are. So I, I appreciate that. I and again, I, I agree with. I, I hear, I hear what they say. Yeah, but I agree with you on on a lot of those points. Like, obviously, I think the guys that he really relied on just relied on for his, what his schemes were going to be just aren't there. Um. But I got to give some fault in, in some areas as well. I think our offense, it, it's just not what it's not going to, it's not working. Um, I think sometimes our defensive schemes, like you said, Joel Embiid, the, they, they doubled him on every touch. He still gave us 30 <laughs> and he had the 11 assists. So it's like, it didn't really work like to any, any point. And a lot of times, again, we couldn't contain the guard. So every time they step foot within the paint, Anthony Davis yeah. has to help. So Joel Embiid was getting easy cleanups because no one was going to, to go box him out. So I, I saw that happen a ton of times. So I get it, you know, but there, there's a lot of problems. A lot of times, like again, Teams go on massive runs and he's just sitting there watching us drown. It's like, please, Darvin, just call a timeout. And again, a lot of it you got to you got to put on the players. The guards aren't performing to what they need to. They're missing open jumpers. Like, there's a lot of things that are just not going well, and the players aren't playing well. Which obviously, the coach, it doesn't matter what you scheme up if your players aren't going to be able to go out there and perform. It, it, you can't do much about that. Now, are there questions about how is he is he motivating his players? They don't seem like they're playing hard for him. Sure, I mean you can you can debate debate that all you want, but we'll never know. We're not in the locker room to tell what exactly is going on there. But I think you know I think Darwin gets a lot of fair criticism and unfair criticism, and I sure. think that's probably with every coach. But again, I think a lot of the root problems is the players, man. Again. Every almost every player that we look at is underperformed to what we thought they would have done at the beginning yeah. of the season. Sure. Like if, if sure. that's happening, how do you how do you how do you break that? So I think that that that's going to be a continuous problem until something changes. And I don't know if it's if it's on the coaching staff. It's some of it's on the coaching staff. Some of it's on the players. I don't know how, how a better way to explain it. Can, can we just focus in on the five out real quick? Because I, I think this is yeah. Go look around. Go look around the league, Ricky and Kwame. Who who runs five out very well? Right, it's Miami, yeah, Sacramento, Boston. They go, run it beautifully. Golden Golden Golden, Golden State. State. Boston has started this year, right? They got, they just started. But not 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 as much. There's still more Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. But anyway, those three teams. Like, what do they have? They have a passing big man, like a, a playmaking big yeah, man who can big. shoot, who can shoot, mm -hmm. and then they have fire alarm shooters. Right, so. Those are like to me, if you like both of those teams pressure the rim because De'Aaron Fox is to the basket. But the reason those are super successful because they have a Kevin Herter running around a screen, right? And that like opens up Bam in the middle of the floor. Uh, Sacramento, uh, Sacramento has Kevin Herter. You have Duncan Robinson in Miami. The Warriors yep. have the two best shooters ever with it. Clay's not efficient, but he still draws a ton of attention. Steph is the most right. fire alarm player ever. We just don't have any like D'Lo and Austin don't come off screens like that. They don't. I think we, no, I think we. Like I think we bet on Torian being that kind of shooter. He's just not yeah. like he chucks threes, but he's just not that type of shooter. Gabe, maybe like Gabe. theoretically, right? Gabe, maybe Gabe's I, the one I, that's I, supposed to be coming off curls. But like, uh, and Kwame, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had our our, our Heat homie uh, tell us that like Gabe's actually not that efficient of a three point shooter. It, it was do you remember he's a streaky. that? Streaky, yeah, he's streaky. streaky. He had dude. he had a good playoff run, but yeah, it said during the season it, the ups and downs. Okay, so it's like you know we can't expect JJ Reddick about to come in this bitch and Jay turn the tide. So, you know, uh, speaking uh, speaking of three point shooting, that's that's number four. 
Lakers three point <laughs> shooting has definitely been the fourth uh, issue that has uh, really been pissing everyone off going for multiple and multiple years. When you get to the Lakers organization, if you're a three point shooter, no, you're not. OK, that that's that's the rules that you come in a three point shooter, you turn into something else when you're here. Who knows? But um, a couple of uh, a couple of um, stats, I guess these are these are stats right now. Uh, the Lakers are shooting thirty three point eight percent from the three point line. Um, mm -hmm. They are 28th in the league in three point shooting percentage. Um, but this is the thing that kind of kind of freaks me out. For a five-out team, the Lakers are 29th in three-point yeah. attempts. What the fuck? <laughs> What's going on, man? And I fine. Yes, Gabe's not here to, to get five and six threes up a game, right? Torian's here. Mr. 40% is here, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we see how that's going. But, like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, just in comparison, the Lakers shoot 29 three-pointers a game. On average, right? But did, what did you say the Sixers had in a quarter? Twenty-two. Uh, they, had, they had twenty-two, three. I believe, through three, three quarters. Three. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, right. Uh, the league leader is the Dallas Mavericks at forty-three threes per game. Doc, this just yeah. turns into a math equation. Yeah, I don't it care does. what what other teams are shooting from three. If they are almost shooting seventy-five percent more. Right on average, like I don't know, no, that's not my math is in my department, so if that's not a good percentage, I don't yeah, excuse me, but they're shooting a lot more than the Lakers, and then also the Lakers are a bad three point shooting team when they with the shots that they're getting up. Don't know how you're gonna win a lot of basketball games in the year of our Lord 2023 with that kind of dynamic. And the hilarity, the the best part about the three pointer percentage is that the Lakers actually set an NBA record for the best three point percentage in a game shooting. I don't know. What was it like? Plus whatever amount of threes, but it's just yeah. like, you know, I, I can't do that heaven or hell that much, especially when you hit the lotto once you can't expect to hit it again. So how do we raise the floor fellas? Do the Lakers have enough artillery in the cupboards to become a respectable three point shooting team? Or I'm going to bring it up for a second time. Does help probably need to come from outside the house? No, we're we're locking the doors. We got to figure out okay, stuff out first. Okay, all right, we're locking we the doors. Figure out stuff out first. Not letting anyone in. Not letting anyone in or out until we figure this out. I think the problem. So I think one of the issues, though, like just in terms of how we get our threes, and just to dive a little deeper into those numbers, Ricky, the Lakers get about uh, fourteen wide open threes a game, which is when the defender is six plus feet away. Yep. We shoot those around thirty six percent. That's twenty sixth in the nba right that's terrible and then even if you open that up so the nba can kind of classify to open threes this is defender four to six feet away which again it's, it's tough to kind of gauge but we're bottom uh bottom eighth so we're like 20 22nd in the league in that we take around 11 threes of those a game make around three to me the threes that we're getting aren't in the correct rhythm and even when they're open they're kind of off the dribble and like in my opinion like dribble penetration threes like where you kick out it's just so different than the ball swings left to right, right? In a five-out offense, the ball's going to swing left to right a lot because you have no vertical spacing on the floor. So, like, when you remove that, a lot of times what happens is the ball kind of is drifting left to right. And even if they're open, right, when the ball's coming to you laterally, I just feel like their flow is not the same. And, like, to me, that's where, like, the sample is too large now with way too many players to me. Look at Austin's threes. Go watch them. They're, like, three feet behind three, the arc, yeah, right? And, like, they're not on this, like, beautiful ball swing, 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 swings to the corner, Austin three. They're, like, shot clocks at five. I need to shoot it. And he takes it. And they're classified as an open three on NBA.com because the defender is, like, four feet back because Austin's, like, three feet above the three-point line. And he can hit these. It's just you make life so hard. And watch Delo's threes as well, right? They're off pick and rolls. They're off screens where he just comes off and takes a step back or he takes them when the, when the guy goes under. I just like to create a couple more where they're catch and shoot. Torian's a huge, like uh, a, a guy who does this a lot. He takes a lot of off the dribble threes. Just plays in transition where Torian will run to the corner. We'll have a three on, like a three on one, and Torian will run to the corner. I'm like, bro, you're not in, and, and we'll kick it out to him, of course. But like, I just, like those are the stuff to me. Jackson Hayes took a three last night. Like, oh, gosh. Like, where do we? 
what are we what yes, are we doing he did, just... baby and he was open in the corner that's where he was sitting that's where of he course was he was open yeah that's... why would they guard him <laughs> yeah and Ooh. god bless god bless jalen hood you know who came in ran a pick and roll sees jackson hayes open in the corner he's like what am i, I like i gotta give it to him he's open and jhs kicks it out to jackson like that's like some of the process threes to me um like not to me not every open three is the same they're not created equally and they're not shot equally and i feel like like our like it's just too much big of a sample these are nba pros shooting 32 percent on wide open threes something's wrong sure. like so, something needs to get fixed i don't think it's just a crypto pressure like, I, i'm not I'm not buying that although malik beasley is shooting like 45 percent from three this year but i mean blazing it but yeah yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I agree. The, our, our shooters just aren't shooting. And again, these we get good looks, we get quality looks sometimes. But again, sometimes we we have we really struggle on that and get finding them. Like you said, Delo's threes. I I don't know how many catch and shoot threes he's gotten all season. I feel like they're all just dribble pull ups, almost all of them. LeBron's threes, and everybody hates them when they miss, but love them when they go in. But man. Those are forced jumpers most of the time. He's not really getting, you know, and again, superstars make those kind of shots, so I get it. But again, they're not quality looks. Anthony Davis barely even shoots them joints. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Christian Wood, he just he's always just parked in the corner. But again, is, is that really what, he, what we want to use him for? The the three point shooting does not is not felt great and it's not great. And again, we have a five out. We're not running any actions for those guys who are supposed to shoot. They literally just stand in their spots and wait for the the pick and roll to whatever happened there. And then when they catch it late in the clock, you basically have to force up a shot. It's not a great flow. We're not getting good looks. We're not getting people in their rhythms. We're just again, you're just asking people go stand in the corner, wait to catch the ball, and when you get it, just throw it up. That's not what the other five out teams do in the league. Like Raj, what you just said, you know, you look in Miami, you have those guys, you have like Miami, Golden State and uh, Sacramento. You said you have those guys, Duncan, um, uh, Kevin Herter. You can say Clay, Steph, whoever. Those guys are running around constantly, zooming around, moving the defense, but they're still shifting the five out. So there's always a look and it's usually because you're moving the defensive bodies. These guys just get to park around as we try and make magic happen out of a pick and roll. And then again, you got to shoot the ball. So again, it, it, it's tough to find the good looks, but we're also not making the ones that we do get that, that are good. Because to me, the offense just doesn't have a good flow. It just looks clunky out there. It looks slow. Unless we get magic really happening from our superstars, it, it never feels like a great flow well, of offense to me. There's, there's no purpose, right? Like watch Miami run their actions. Like watch the purpose that they like, Every cut and every screen has a purpose to it, right? Like Duncan Robinson knows if I don't get this shot here, it's because the roll man's open, right? Like I have a read, yeah. I have a counter. Mm -hmm. Austin, like to me, when I watch our team run our offense, there's no purpose, there's no flow, there's no if this happens, this is the correct read. There's no read and react that's happening. It's just it's my turn, and now it's Delo's turn, it's LeBron's turn, right? And so when it's a turn base, and the Clippers are dealing with, dealing with this right now. They're running a very turn-based offense, right? If Paul George is at the top of the key, Kawhi's not going to go screen for the corner man with any no, vigor or with any like juice, right? He's like, I'm not involved. Why would I go screen in contact? If AD is on the opposite side, this happens so many freaking times. It pisses me off. LeBron is posting up on one side of the floor. Go watch the other four guys just stand there. No one moves. No one what? moves. No one, zero people move. So LeBron takes a turnaround fade away. Skip Bayless comes out and goes like, why the hell did LeBron shoot 45 times? It's because like no one moved on the opposite side. There's no juice. There's no like purpose. I see even when the shots go in, Kwame, that you were talking about. I just, I just don't like our process so far. And I think like these aren't things that like Vanderbilt to me, what he fixes is I'm not calling any of our starters selfish, but we need an unselfish player. And yeah, so he's going to do the right? dirty like, work. <laughs> Not just like do the not just dirty work, like someone who will screen with zero personal vendetta with it, yeah. right? Like he Vanderbilt will go and screen for you with no thought about getting the ball back. Um, with no idea of like, okay, this I'm screening for my selfish purposes. Vando comes in, will just screen. He does a lot of this. He sets like pin screens in the corner. He does this out of just his own. This is how he plays. I think we're missing some of that. Um, but yeah, I just I think we need a different process. Like our offense is kind of built around Torian Prince being a volume three-point shooter and i like to me that's such a wrong way to go about it and i think that's that's the way we've kind of acted as has the season has started and that's like we're 25th in offense and lebron and ad have played every game like that that's it's nuts that's it's insane lebron is a should be a top five offense of himself as old as he is 
and it just hasn't hasn't worked out. I don't know, y'all. This uh, this this kind of go back into that coaching category for me because this is <laughs> this is a little nasty when you take a look at it and you hear everything that's being said, right? So, I you know I I think it's a little bit it's a little bit of expectations from guys that maybe aren't one hundred percent built for that type of role. You also got Sorry. Torian running around guarding players' best best scores. Because that combination is going to work out. It's not like he is a two-way player himself. But, hey, Coach Ham is going to turn him into one. God damn it, I guess. Um, you know, Cam Reddish for everything that he's been defensively for us, right? I, You know, I guess we're just going to have to retire the whole notion of him being a a very dangerous offensive prospect like that, you know, it, it, it is what it is, right? Some days he'll, he'll hit the corner three, some days he won't, but you know, I think we appreciate kind of the, the growth that he's had being a, a menace yeah. on the defensive end. So, um, but that just means you're adding another player to the rotation and it's not like Vando is your knockdown shooter heavyweight champion of the world where it's like okay now you're gonna have more guys that aren't the greatest three-point shooters in there um but to, to raise your defensive floor so you know i i i think the lakers are are probably going to see more issues with this three-point shooting unless some larger changes happen to just the philosophy of this offense but mm -hmm. you know they have three they only have three players on this roster that are shooting 35% or better from three Kwame this ain't 2001 man this this, this ain't we're just happy Derek Fisher can hit a three and you know yeah. everybody else is in the 30% Robert Ory can he shoot a three but don't look for anyone else like that Kobe streaky but that's it like I mean you look up and down the roster, how many guys are really going to be able to get you like four three pointers outside of, you know, a LeBron boom or like a D Lo boom? Like it, it, it again, I think some, there's some personnel issues there. I think there's some schematic issues there. We're for, for having a subpar shooting team, we need better schemes to get these guys better looks. And we simply don't have that. We run an offense as if we have guys, and as soon as they touch it, it's, it's three points. Like we don't have those type of players. And I don't think we're yeah. really utilizing the the talent that we have and the way we have it for the offense that we want to see so again i think there's a lot that kind of culminates there but yeah i i don't know the direction to point but again i think there's some scheme things and the players just haven't performed the way we thought they would it makes you kind of appreciate that they found themselves two games above 500 but i think right. as raj says at the beginning the Lakers are it's better at worse than their record all at the same time. And that's that's kind of the wild part. And it kind of makes sense after talking through all of this with their with the, literally, obviously, the only thing holding this team back from being an absolute tire fire is the health of Anthony Davis and LeBron James. These 16 games or so that they play together, that is what's holding this ship right because the – the supporting cast, it's not it, it it's not casting right now, <laughs> right? Uh, so you know we will we will ride our superstars, but I think the issue that we spoke about before are sometimes our superstars are more often they're not needing more help from their supporting cast because they just may not have it that night. So, uh, I mean.